Welcome, Welcome to Shade it's in the city. city. I am your girl, Trees. It's Nels. And today we are jumping into our review of season five, episode 12, getting deep. Here we go again, these long seasons, but we love it. We're here for Love and Marriage Huntsville. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you've hit that like button. And that subscribe button. Oh yeah, that's the right one. You're right. I was off. My bad. And, <laughs> and yes, welcome back Shade Squad and welcome all our new viewers. And yeah, y'all, let's get into it. Let's get into it, y'all. And let's get shady. Uh, we see Mel and she's up with the kids and they're about to have breakfast. Um, their chef has arrived, Mr. Anthony Thomas. Apparently he is from the DC area. So shout out. <laughs> um, and Mel said that she wanted everything to go smoothly and take off any pressure. Um, so, you know, she had to make sure her and her baby's meals was, was going to be taken care of. And I said, okay, I'm at it. I wish we could all do that. Um, oh. That was the, the spread looks beautiful. I mean, you know, I'm all about breakfast. It, it looks great. It didn't look very kid friendly, unless you know, unless you know, they they that might be fancy. You know, they might be fancy like that fancy shit. They look. This is how you know they fancy because I said the same thing to myself. But you like avocado toast. Like some people, like I could see. I my, love avocado toast. My son loves toast, and he actually likes avocado. So I could see him liking that. For me. For me, you know me, I hardly eat breakfast, but if I am going to do something, I ain't doing all that. So it was a little too intricate for me. So I I love avocado toast, right? I could do avocado toast with a little bit of salmon like he did, but then it was like the avocado toast with the salmon and the blueberries. It was just a lot for me. And I, I would think if I was a kid, but I mean, they was eating it. They was eating it. Right. So you know, they're, Okay. They're refined. Okay. Clearly. Yes. Clearly. Trust and believe if it would have been so. Look, look our, our kids would have been like, can I get some some frozen pancakes, some frozen fruit? Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Let Tank say the prayer or little Martel. And uh, Martel says that he's so proud that he loves to pray. That lets him and Melody know that they're doing something right. I mean, it was really cute. He was just like, I want to thank everybody. I love everyone in the world. And, you know. He was it was long-winded, just like Trees is. His sister kept on going. Oh, don't do is he, that. Is he almost done? Like, don't do can that. I get to my food, please? There is there is not enough gratefulness and thankfulness and blessings to go around, okay? Right, uh, thankful um, we got a microwave to warm this shit up because it's taking forever to get through it. <laughs> so as they sit down to eat, Miss Marlene asked the kids, what's their favorite memories of Florida? So I believe it was Milani who said that her dad's lava shorts are her favorite part. a couple of them. I don't know what was up with these shorts. It was... Right. Well, Mariah says that it was her being in on the jet skis. Uh, little Martel says for him, it's going to the beach. It's the jet skis. It's the riding bikes, taking pictures. And, you know, Sugar Mama says she likes looking at her daddy's shorts, too. So Martel says that for him, it's the bike rides, which they still do now. And he reminisces, reminisces on their last bike ride as a family while they were in Destin. And it was actually really cute. Um, and of course, we got to play back the footage and the receipts. Uh, Martel says in confessional that it means something to him. And it know, and he knows that it means something to the kids and they enjoy it. Um, as Mel is getting up from the table, Martel lets her know that Marceau and Tisha plan to stop by. So Mel's like, who said that? Not who said that. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> um, he reminds her that he had a conversation with them last night. And Mel says she remembers but didn't realize he had extended any invitations to anybody. Yeah, she was like, you was on the phone with them, but you ain't ever tell me that they was coming. So they recapped the conversation with Marceau. And apparently he and Tisha are not too far. They're apparently in Pensacola, Florida. Um, so he did invite them over and tells, the, tells Mel that they'll be there in 45 minutes. Now... Mel is clearly a little blown. 
And, you know, it says in the confessional, um, of course, you know, here's Martel not respecting boundaries. And she says, Martel sharing with her, he's invited Tisha and Marceau without consulting her is a reminder of the disrespect from the marriage. Period. She feels Period. like he believes he can do what he wants and that's what he do. And Martel brings up that, you know, they're doing a boat ride. And I love what Mel was like, I already got, that's booked, plans. But don't tomorrow. Be, right, don't, don't be, be trying to, yeah. Don't be trying to, my trip. no more into that. You know what? That's probably really why she didn't have him put in on anything. Because she's like, you're not going to take control over nothing. This is my trip. You're just a guest here. Good point. Very good points. Very good points. So, then um, Martel brings, oh, well, yeah, the boat ride. Um, and she tells him that's scheduled for 10 a.m. the next day. Then Martel realizes Mel is a little annoyed that he invited the Scots without mentioning it to her first. However, he feels they have some issues and that sometimes those issues should be put aside and you should try to be cordial at all times. Can I tell y'all, this really made my blood boil. I was just telling those, if that, that is one of my hugest, hugest pet peeves. Not only am I planner, so I hate being thrown off and being thrown in the middle, but I cannot stand when people force on me. I you know how I feel about that. You know, you know how I, even if I was gonna do it, the fact that you were just expecting me, Think me to, to do it, oh. I'm not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Right. So, um, and then he basically lies and says that he believes that they're still friends, and you know they should be able to just, you know, tough it out, and put it to you the side. You apply that to your own life. You don't. You don't. Don't 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 try to apply that to my life, okay? You apply that to your own life. If you feel that that's how y'all should be, and you apply that to your own life in your own home on your own vacation, that you're paying for. Exactly. Well, everybody's at the beach. You know, they're having a great time. Um, you know, the kids are enjoying that. Mom's there, dad's there, grandma's there, and it's really just a great vibe. It is. Um, Martel decides this is the perfect time to pull out his phone. And show uh, Melody some old pictures and memories. Um, back when they were, you know, together, back on their uh, previous Destin trip. Look, let me say something. Melody said he is trying to play on, you know, this nostalgia. Look, listen, it, it, ain't, it ain't happening. She's like, sir, we're making new memories where we're divorced and co-parenting. Let's, let's build from here, okay? Fuck all that old shit. We are okay. never, ever, ever getting back, getting back together. <laughs> um, so then, you know, Tisha and Marceau, you know, they show up at the beach. Um, let me tell you something. They're like, hey, hi. Mel is just sitting there with her hat on. Like, I don't hear or see you. Maybe if I act like they're not. Like, I'm right. Right? <laughs> I was just like. She hit him with the mannequin challenge. She was like, I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Finally, they walk around, and Mel is like, "How do I?" Stop! Stop it! Right. So Tisha compliments Mel on her braids because apparently it's the first time she's ever seen her with them. Um, and you know, Martella's like, "Yeah, you know, she actually looks really good with the braids," and she's like, "Oh, it's time for a switch up." Sorry, we don't want you like it, but I got to go. I will change it very quickly. Exactly. And in a confessional, um, Martel says that he feels that, you know, her throwing jabs, you know, he believes that that's her safe space. Basically, that's like a defense mechanism. You know, yeah, yeah, to like, tell him to stay the fuck away. I, I, I agree. I agree, sir. So Mel says that her mood did absolutely positively change once the Scots got there because, you know, she felt dis disrespected. Um, and basically this is the type of shit that Martel does. You know, he makes a plan, he does some shit and he expects everybody to fall in line. Now, Tisha is expressing how everything is, you know, how it was back in the day. It's like old days and, um, you know, everybody's still under one roof and it's a good time. That's the and Martel, Martel and Mel they remember. Right? And Martel is just eating all this shit up. This is what he wanted, but that's, that's what I was saying. I think this is what he wanted. Right. And this is why he invited them. Um, now, like Marceau, Mel said, he has a history of doing this. Um, listen, Mel looks aggravated the entire time. Like, please don't put this type of false hope in this man's head, please. We're in a good space. I don't need no bullshit. Now, Marceau mentioned that they're getting, you know, on the boats today. And 
uh, Martel asked if he plans to go fishing. He's like, absolutely not. Um, I'm not about to be embarrassed in front of my son. Not right. gonna happen. So Tisha suggests that next time Martel goes fishing, she he takes um their son with him because she's like, you know what? It takes a village. Right. And Mel over there taking shots. Martel don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. Why are you doing this? And she says that, you know, he believes that he doesn't, like, she believes that he doesn't believe in it because um, it removes a certain level of control for him. And the only village she believes is, village she believes in is Martellage. Actually, she has every right to feel the way she does because he's the one that started with her because she has the brother watching the kids when she and the babysitter mm -hmm. i know exactly where she was coming from with that i knew where she was coming from and that's so mar uh marceau clearly picked up on this tenseness in the room and said you know we're gonna have to learn these trigger words yeah he's he's learning learning these trigger. Words he was like clearly pass um is a no family is a no and watching kids is a no um <laughs> And Martell is like, look, y'all got to go because, you know, now Mel is starting to act different. Um, I don't think it's them, sir. I think it's the fact that you invited them, period. But, you know, right. you're not there. So Mel said, you know, this is the kids' vacation. Basically, it's all about the kids. And Martell says, you know, it's about them, too. He's having fun. You know, it's their vacation, too. He Look, he for him, it's a whole family thing, you know. He's really trying to sell himself on this. So they started discussing how fun it was. <laughs> riding on a golf cart and Tisha asked um, if, you know, they were riding alone, uh, Mel and Martel. And, if, you know, Mel got a little defensive. She's like, you can tell she's a little aggravated. She's like, this insinuating that we're doing shit alone. It's about the fucking kids. Like, right. like stop trying to introduce that narrative because that's not mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. And, and you Tisha can definitely that thinks this, she's being cute. And see, that's what I'm saying. This whole, she'll get on, talk shit about Miss Van or Mel and, oh, they don't own up to da-da-da. But you're definitely, you definitely know what you're doing, Tisha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can clearly see the smile fading off of Martel's face. Like, he's like, my hopes are uh, yeah. flying right. away. <laughs> then Marcel asks, you know, who's the better driver between the two? Mel thinks, um, then, you know, I think Mel points to uh, Martel and she's like, she thinks it's a good idea for them to play the game. Kind of like me and Trace play. So he's yeah. like, you know, you ask questions about each other and, um, well, they ask questions about the couple, find out who knows more or gets the answer correct. But, you know, right. they have to um, have their backs to each other. Um, so they did a round, uh, Marceau and Tisha did a round. Apparently Marceau and Tisha won. Uh, it was five to three. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it, that, that brought back memories for me. I thought yeah, it was, it was fun. I did enjoy watching that. I was like, oh. <laughs> they played that game. We go back to Huntsville where Kimmy is getting ready to cut her hair. Uh, she says that, you know, just based off her reading, talking to doctors and her own clinical experience, she knows she's probably going to lose her hair at some point going through these treatments. Um, so since it's the one thing that she has control over, um, she can go from long to short and it's her choice. Um, she's having her friend come, Drea, I believe her name was, um, and I guess a hairdresser who ends up being Brooke, come to cut her hair. And, you know, she says she wants more Reese to, you know, clean it up for her. So, um, as you know, she tells Maurice, you know, her friend is coming over to hold her hand during the process and lets Maurice know that he can hold the other one. And I thought, now this, y'all, when he was like, I just want to hold her, it touched my heart. I was like, go ahead, Maurice. I just, I'm loving Maurice. Um, so then they go into the kitchen and then we meet, uh, I mean, was it Breon or Brooke or I'm, Lord, don't get me lying. So, um, but the stylist, then her girl, Drea. And her, her dream hype, team. Right. And her hype, or her hype girl, she calls her, arrives just in time. Um, now, they ask Maurice how he is doing, and he actually admits that Kimmy is handling things much better than he is. Um, that almost got me, too. I was like, damn. Um, he, so actually she, seemed, he actually seemed, um, I, know it's, I know it's a little bit superficial, but uh, I know how guys are with hair also. Right. Um, and he actually seemed a little emotional about it and emotional yeah when she was cutting her hair um 
And so apparently they plan on cutting her hair by the way that I understood it, like either making her own piece or her own wig, own unit. Um, so that's good that she's obviously going to. Yeah, with her own um, bundles of hair. Right. Um, so they reassure her that, you know, this is just a new hairstyle. People cut their hair all the time. It'll grow back. I'm not going to lie to you. They were making me more like for me, my anxiety. I would have been like, OK, I need y'all to get away from me or shut up and just cut my hair. Like all the extras, continuous, like, oh, girl, little grow back. It's okay. It's just hair. Stop saying that shit. I know what I'm doing. Stop saying that shit to me. I think that would have freaked me out even more. Just me. Um, I could appreciate Maurice just sitting there and watching and being supportive. So now um, as Maurice jumps in to, you know, kind of clean line up, up. Like line up the back. Yeah. Uh, Brooke compliments him. I keep calling her Brooke. Her name is Brie. Y'all, we're gonna call her Brooke. So she compliments him on his skills, and she said that's how they actually met. She apparently was stalking him on Facebook. And one of her right, let me find out. Kimmy over here sliding in the DMs. Um, and so one of her friends told her that he was a barber, and so she said she hit him up to cut Jalen's hair. And, you know, says it was one of their first introductions. And Maurice actually jokes that he didn't realize he was being interviewed at the time. So, mm -hmm. right. So her hair is finished pretty quickly and she looks amazing with her new cut. Um, you know, she does shed a few tears, but, you know, takes her new do in stride. Maurice does say in confessional, Kimmy is not her hair, her breast, or how youthful she looks today. It's her smile, her spirit. And he says he falls more in love with her every day. And I was like, damn you, Maurice. Yeah, that was it. That, that it was Woo. back in Destin, Florida. Uh, Marceau and Martella are upstairs playing pool. Um, and Marceau actually admits that his Africa trip um changed him um and made him want more time with everything. Okay, so maybe it did do you a little good. I mean, you, your family still could have came, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then he says, you know, we need to address the elephant in the room. Okay, and wants to know how they got to the good, how, I'm sorry, how Martel and Mel got to the good space that they are in now. Because last time he checked, they was ready to chop each other's heads off. Okay. Well, but, last time they did something together, which was- It Vegas. was in Vegas. It was the Vegas mm -hmm. trip. Mm -hmm. And Martel says- that he honestly feels that Martel got, I'm sorry, that Mel got the time that she needed to go through the pain and heal, and him as well. Martel says that, is that he's accepted the things that he's done in the past and realized that Mel had probably checked out of the relationship because of the things that he was doing. Mm. Mm, good job. And good said, reflection. Right? And says that initially he was pointing the finger at her, saying she wasn't um, doing what she was supposed to do sexually or cooking. And he felt like she was denying him of certain things, but he had to realize there was a reason why she was denying him of these things. And it was probably because of the things that he was doing. Betcha by golly, wow. Right? Um, <laughs> so Marceau suggests that maybe wives just have sex less. And their expectation of getting it as much as they were getting it when they were dating is just far-fetched. I don't know. I, I can't speak for every marriage, but they've also been married for, what, 14, 16 years or something like that? Yeah. So maybe at that point, it's different. You know, maybe if, you know, who knows? Um, so he congratulates him and tells him that, you know, he's proud of him for his growth and taking accountability. But he does agree this is in the confessional. He did not tell Martel this, and I'm glad he did not. Okay. Yeah. He does agree that being denied some sexual acts in a marriage could make you act crazy. Although, you know, he ain't never been in that situation because, you know, Tisha give it up when he wowing it. Okay. She's all right. She, she, she hop on her knees. Okay. And beg for forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Marcel asked him if he thinks. That if Martel, I'm sorry, if Mel knew how much he regrets the things that he's done, you know, would it open the door? And Martel says that he's not sure 
if she necessarily knows how much he regrets. But, but he has apologized and they've talked, but doesn't want her to feel that, you know, he's trying to get back with her and just wants to put the respect back and continue to be good like they are now. I was like, oh, okay, look at us growing. Yes, I was um, very impressed. Yes, I, me too, girl. So Marcel asked how he feels about, you know, in the future, them both dating other people. And moving on. Right. And Martel says that it's going to happen eventually. And it's a conversation that they'll have to have and says that he trusts Mel's judgment and whoever she decides to bring around the children because she's a good judge of character. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, I'm in shock. I was I was in shock with this conversation. I was. Okay? Too. And he says, ideally, they just want to show their children that regardless what they've been through, they've overcame it. And they'll continue to put them first and feels this trip as a step in the right direction. So, you know, and the kids are really over the moon right now. And he thinks that they understand that they're divorced and they're not getting back together. Um, and, you know, they could possibly be hoping that that would happen. But basically, he's going to deal with it as it comes. And, you know, he's happy with where they are, you know, and he gonna, they're going to ride it out. Okay, and in the confessional, Marcel says um, if he could travel back in time, they should have continued to have more conversations every year until they got back on the right track. And they'd probably be in a much better place, still raising their children together under one roof. Um, and he feels that he should have had a lot more patience. And he actually seems to have gotten emotional um, and got up from the chair and left the uh, interview. Tisha and Mel are having their own conversation. And, you know, Tisha's just asking her, like, you know, what what made you want to invite Martells of Florida? And I know Mel was irritated because she was like, bitch, I said multiple times that it is for my kids, but okay. Um, and so she's like, well, is it everything, you know, you hoped for and, you know, expected? I think um, she was just more asking about like her her growth because it wasn't like that a year ago. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what she was more so asking. Now, what made you decide? Because last year you wouldn't invite him on your doorstep. <laughs> I guess, or she could be being messy, Tisha. So Mel talks about how she had to be in a space emotionally to have Martel in her space. She says after she went through she went through Martel, there's no going out or hanging out on vacations together. She says she understood that despite people giving their two cents about what they should be able to do or handle, she needed her space. And Tisha agrees that that's a good place to be in. Mel says in 2022, she feels like she's moved on from that. She's not sitting around wishing things were different. She's very secure in the decision she made and doesn't wake up not one day regretting it. Tisha then goes into the confessional and says that, you know, she hopes this alone time was really good for Mel. However, she's not sure because Mel is good at portraying what she wants you to see. So you never really know what the truth is. And then goes on to say, and she's so good at portraying things. She even fools herself a lot of the time. But have you looked at the mirror lately? I'm talking to the man in the mirror. <laughs> She blew my whole life when she said that. I was like, I can't wait till reunion and somebody play that shit back for her. You know what? You know what's messed up for me, though? The fact that Mel really don't fuck with you like fuck that. Fuck no. with you. And, and she's having a genuine conversation, being open and vulnerable with you right now. That she and doesn't really, want to have with you. Exactly. And you have the nerve to take what she said and twist it and make it seem like she's putting on a front. This is why she don't like talking to your ass. And this is why, why she can't trust this is ass. why this is why I'm not mad at Mel for not extending no olive branches, none of that shit. What for? It's not genuine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, that's all I have. Mel does tell Tisha that if she were to have a baby with somebody else, oh yeah, she did say that. Um, she gonna make up sign a contract because she need a morning nanny, afternoon nanny, a night nanny, 
Um, and, you know, she does say that she's dated since Martel, but she doesn't necessarily need to get married. You know, she was married for 14 years, but if it happens, it happens. And, you know, she also said that she's learning that people could be married and that doesn't mean a goddamn thing. OK, it's more important to her um, to have commitment and to have someone who's loyal and who understands protecting her mentally and emotionally is more than just a piece of paper saying I do. OK. Period. Right. I just love what she said. I said, OK, Mel, come through. You dropping them jewels and throwing shots. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to another review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, season five, episode 12. If you guys have not already, well, hold on. Yeah, hit the like button. Comment. <laughs> I, now I'm messing up on the job. Subscribe. And hit the notification bell. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to hurt that time. And please make sure that you're following us on all of the platforms, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Facebook, the IG. We're definitely feeling the love. And we appreciate you guys. And we will catch you next week for another review of Love and Marriage on Spill. Have a good night. Mwah.